Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, if you're buying a smartphone, there are many, many different things you need to look at. The quality of the camera, the resolution of the display, how much RAM you get, what internal storage there is, and of course, the processor. Now, if you're buying a smartphone with a Snapdragon processor, you'll discover there are many, many different types of Snapdragon processor. In fact, Qualcomm have different series of processors, the 800 series, the 700 series, the 600 series, and so on. Now, in the 800 series, you get the kind of the flagship devices. In the 700 series, you kind of get the upper mid-range, premium mainstream, maybe you want to call it. 600 series, mainstream, mid-range, and so on and so on. There are other series below that. Now, each of these processors has a different CPU and GPU combination. Now, the CPUs in the Snapdragon processors are called cryo CPUs, and they have their own numbering scheme. So once you've mastered the numbering scheme of the actual processors, you can need to understand the numbering scheme of the actual CPUs. So today I want to unpack and understand the naming of the cryo processors and include some information about the relative performance of those processors, particularly over the last few years. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So the aim today is to try to understand Qualcomm's uh, cryo numbering scheme. So for example, the Snapdragon 765 uh, was recently launched. It's got a cryo 475 in it, but the Snapdragon 865 was also recently launched. That has a cryo 585 in it. So what does it all mean? How do we understand these different cryo numbers? And when we talk about the cryo numbers, we are talking only about the CPU. Now the original cryo CPU was found in the Snapdragon 820 and 821. It was a complete custom design from Qualcomm themselves, so a complete CPU design. It was of course ARM V8 compatible. It was a 64-bit quad-core CPU. It ran at 2.2 gigahertz maximum and it was built on a 14 nanometer process. Now if you put it through Speedtest G and just look at the CPU part of Speedtest G, it can complete that part of the test in 120 seconds. So that was the original Cryo custom built by Qualcomm themselves. Now in 2016, Qualcomm uh, signed a new deal with uh, ARM so that rather than designing their own custom cores, they would use ARM's cores. However, they had a new license called Built-on Cortex Technology, which A, would give them the right to call the CPU configurations Cryo rather than having to say Cortex, A73 or whatever. And also they had some input into the way that the CPUs were designed. And in fact, uh, the actual Qualcomm ones, and we'll see later, could actually have some differences to the standard uh, Cortex um, uh, CPU design. So the Cryo 200 series is found in the Snapdragon 835, the Snapdragon 660, and so on. And when you see a Cryo 200 series, you're basically talking about Cortex A73 and Cortex A53 running at a maximum speed of 2.45 gigahertz. So here we've gone from quad core in the original Cryo to octa core in the 200 series. And depending on whether you're in the 600 series of Snapdragons or in the 800 series, it could be at 10, 11, or 14 uh, nanometers. And when you run Speedtest G, uh, the Snapdragon 835 can complete that in 85 seconds, so down from 120 seconds with the original Cryo. Now there are at the moment three different types of Cryo 200 series. There's the 250, the 260 and the 280 and you find them in the 600 series, the uh, 632, the 636, the 660 and the 665 and then of course in the 835. Now they're all octa-core, four times Cortex A73 and four to, uh, Cortex A53 and then as I said here depending on which chip you use depending on which process it is but there are differences so for example the 665 only runs at uh, 2 gigahertz compared to the 2.45 gigahertz of the uh, cryo here 280 so there are differences uh, along the whole lineup here then you move forward a year and we're now into the Cryo 300 series, it's 2017. And the 300 series you find in the Snapdragon 845, the 710, the 712, and so on. And here, depending on the chip, you can either have two Cortex A75 cores and then six Cortex A55 cores, or four Cortex A75 cores and four Cortex A55 cores. And the maximum speed of the top one, that's the Snapdragon 845, would be 2.8 gigahertz. And all the chips in this are built on a 10 nanometer. And if you look at the speed test G component of that, the Snapdragon 845 can complete that in 60 seconds. Later on, I'm gonna plot all these numbers on a graph so that we can see visually the changes from generation to generation. 
and there are currently two different processors in the uh, Cryo 300 series, the 360 and the 385. In the 360, we've got the Snapdragon 670, the 710 and the 712, two Cortex A75 cores and six Cortex A55 cores. So you've got this two plus six setup, 10 nanometers. And then when you've got the 845, uh, which is the flagship one, then of course it's four and four. And the 850 is actually designed for these always on connected laptops for uh, for Windows on ARM processors. And again, we can look at the difference here. The Snapdragon 710, for example, runs at 2.2 gigahertz, which of course is lower than what the uh, Snapdragon 845 runs at. Then we come to the 400 series Cryo 2018. That's found in the Snapdragon 855, the uh, Snapdragon 8CX, that's the laptop one, the Snapdragon 730 and so on. And again, it's either two Cortex A76 cores now, so we've upgraded the cores, and six Cortex A55, the uh, energy efficient cores stay the same, or four Cortex A76 cores and uh, four Cortex A55 cores. Maximum speed now of 2.84 gigahertz. We've moved to seven nanometers. And again, if you use speed test G, you can see that the Snapdragon 855 completes this in 42 seconds. So remember, we started at 120 seconds with the original Cryo. And there are quite a lot of chips available in the Cryo 400 series. 460, 468, 470, 475, 485, 490, and 495. So let's look at these first three. These are all two plus six setups. That's a Snapdragon 675, the Snapdragon 7C, Snapdragon 730, and 730G. And of course, the 7, uh, Snapdragon 7C is another laptop processor for the Windows on ARM laptops. 2 plus 6. When you get down here a bit more, you can see that the Snapdragon 765 is a good, interesting uh, chip, but it's still really a 2 plus 6, but really it's 1 plus 1 plus 6 in the sense that this one core is slightly, slightly, slightly running a little bit faster. In fact, it's running at 2.3 gigahertz then the other one is running at 2.2 gigahertz and then these cores here the a55s are running at 1.8 gigahertz whereas you compare it to the 470 both of these cores here are running at 2.2 gigahertz so 100 uh, megahertz difference between these two here otherwise really the same kind of setup and when you go back down to the 760 for example these are running at uh, 2 gigahertz and here at 1.7 gigahertz. So Qualcomm tried to differentiate themselves in the different chips by combination and by uh, clock speed. And there may be some different cache levels as well in these. And then when you get to the Snapdragon 855 and the 855 Plus, and you've got this three plus one plus four. So that's four A76 cores, of which one of them again is running slightly faster, three slightly, just a little bit lower, and then four Cortex A55 cores. And you've also got the Air 8C and the 8CX, which are of course those laptop processors. And I recently did a, some videos on the Surface Pro X, which is running Microsoft's SQ1 processor. And that is basically a, a Snapdragon 8CX tweaked to run a little bit faster and maybe some other modifications that Microsoft really are being quite coy about, even though I've tried contacting them quite a lot to find out. And of course, we've just had the launch of the Snapdragon 865, which has got the Cryo 500 series in it. And that means now we go to the Cortex A77, four Cortex A77, four Cortex A55, same speed, 2.84 gigahertz, same um, manufacturing process, seven uh, nanometers. However, we are now at 36 seconds when it comes to the Speedtest G CPU part of the Speedtest G run. So let's plot that all on a graph. Here we've got up here the original Cryo, and then the next one down, the Cryo 2, 3, 4, 5. And so here we are now, we've gone down from 120 seconds right down here to 36 seconds. And then I've kind of drawn this graph on. I've been quite gentle. It's not as steep as this drop down here. It may actually end up being a bit steeper if we have a good process node change, maybe to five nanometers. Uh, but I'm, I'm being conservative, I'm taking it down here, but you can still see that this is going to go down to below 20 seconds, speed test G, uh, below 20 seconds, uh, not next year, but the year after that. So the Cryo 7 uh, series, whatever that ends up being called. So down from 120 seconds to 20 seconds. And if we plot that the other way around now as relative performance, so here is the Cryo, that's relative performance one. The Cryo is the same speed as the original Cryo. The Cryo two was about 1.4 times faster. And we can plot this up, 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 up here until right up here you can see, I'm estimating when we get to the Cryo seven, we are looking at 
you know, maybe six times faster than the original Cryo. Certainly already here, we're at over three times faster. Okay, we're gonna maybe go to four times faster here with the Cryo 6, and I think we could go to six times faster. Let's hope there's a process node change here. So that's quite an interesting graph. We can see the development of where that's going from the humble beginnings, even if you just take the ARM developed cores. So here we've got the humble beginnings of the Cryo 2 series and look how we're growing year on year. And that's to do with changes to the microprocessor design, Cortex A75, Cortex A76, Cortex A77, and also changes down, as you saw, 14 nanometers, 10 nanometers, seven nanometers, which also allow us to have this boost in performance. And so kind of in summary, this is the really the, the way to remember it. Cryo is the original custom core. Cryo 2 is called its A73, Cryo 3 is called its A75, Cryo 4 is called its A76, Cryo 5 is called its A77. It's a bit of a, difficult because there was no called its A74 here in the middle. So you, you can't just kind of say, well, it's always two, you know, two more. Here it's two more than the number. You can say that for three, four, and five. So five, two more is A77, two more than the four is A76. But the, the first two are a bit of a you know, kind of irregular, like irregular verbs in a, in, a, in a language. So you just have to kind of know that if you want to instantly recognize the different CPUs. And there you have it. I really hope now you've got an understanding of how Qualcomm is naming its cryo CPUs. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. Why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.